Let's take a look at the rendering and batch processing options in WaveLab Pro 10. I have a montage selected here with different song. And if you notice, I have a reference track here. It looks a little bit different than, uh, than a regular track. You can tell that this is a stereo track by this little icon here. And the reference track, which has an R in there and different icons. Uh, some of the icons here that I'm looking at is this little uh, listen alone mode icon looks like a shape like a ear so if you click on it actually mute all the other track and let you listen the reference track so you can easily toggle between your working clip and the reference track on the left here that little icon allows you to select the busing so you want to uh, hear the reference track from so it could be the main playback bus or it could be a master section playback processing and to select the busing you have to go to file Preferences, Audio Connections, Playback. You can see here the main playback bus through the Dante Virtual Sound Card in this case. I have different category here on the bottom. And I have a reference track, which I name reference track in here. Reference track before playback processing and use. Or you can also use different uh, speaker arrangement as we talked about in a previous video. Now, if we go back to view, I can also click on the tab or the little graphic section here on the upper left. To create a reference track, you simply right click on the track portion here and it will give you the options of color, zoom, uh, add tracks. So you can see you can add a stereo track, mono track, reference track, as well as video track and picture track if you'd like to. So I can just click on reference track. It will create a new reference track, which I can move around any way I want. I might want to just uh, below the other track here. And then from here, let's just say I process this clip and I want to bounce the effect and then keep going to a different version maybe. I can right click on the top portion and you can see the clip selected range will allow me to bounce the selected clip or create a super clips with, from selected clips, multiple clips. So I can bounce these clips with different plugins and use that as a reference, try different processing on the same clip. Now, if I right click on the bottom portion, you'll get the active clips, which allows me to edit the plugin or uh, play clips or split a cursor or some other editing uh, functions here available. From there, you can just render offline or real time. You have a rendering button on top here. You also have one in here at the bottom of the tool window. Now let's take a look at the batch processor. Let's create a new file group here. I'm gonna create a batch processor. I'm gonna go with a template here. And you can see on the left side, you have different plugins you can process for the clips. So you can select any number of clips, drag and drop the clips in here. It can be any number of uh, any type of clips here. And you can process with a custom plugin chain or associate master section preset or no plugin at all. And you will convert the files directly from here. Now, if we go with a custom plugin chain, you can, for example, engage or disengage some of the custom plugins here. You can also click on the plus button, add a master section favorite, master section plugins in here, some uh, monopass plugin. You can just drag and drop the uh, uh, process you want directly in here. You also have multipass plugins, uh, DC remover, as well as metapass plugins and any order that you want it to be processed. Once you ready to process you have you of course preferences renaming the file format option xml options in here and you can start preview processing or start the process in here